ladies and gentlemen, good morning to you all. It is my pleasure and singular honor to welcome you all to this press conference to launch the Zimbabwe Women Rights Commission Smart Media Electoral Rights Awareness Campaign Strategy for the 2023 Harmonized Elections, which is running under the theme My Vote, My Right, My Country. As you are aware, ladies and gentlemen, the Zimbabwe Human Rights Commission is the national human rights mm. institution for the country with a dual constitutional mandate of protecting, promoting, and enforcing fundamental human rights and freedoms as well as being the public protector for the country. One of the commission's functions is to promote awareness of and respect for human rights at all levels of society as prescribed in section 2431A of the Constitution of Zimbabwe. In fulfillment of this constitutional mandate, the Commission has developed a multimedia campaign strategy to raise awareness among citizens of their electoral rights enshrined in section 67 of the Constitution. The awareness campaign is made up of wide-ranging information, education and communication, IEC materials that include print and audio visuals that are aimed at raising awareness of the various rights and freedoms relating to the entire electoral process. The awareness campaign is, a, as I have mentioned earlier, running under the theme my vote, my right, my country. The theme underscores the constitutional rights of citizens in actively exercising their right to vote and to participate in peaceful, free, fair, and credible electoral processes. It also emphasizes the values of sovereignty, good governance, and patriotism that are essential in any electoral process. The IEC materials developed for the campaign include brochures, leaflets, posters, banners, radio and television jingles, T-shirts, some of which are going to be handed to you if they are available, among other materials. The Commission has already commenced rolling out the Electoral Rights Awareness Campaign starting with a series of radio programs to raise awareness of the rights and the freedoms relating to the entire electoral cycle to which citizens of Zimbabwe are entitled in terms of Section 67 of the Constitution. As part of the awareness campaign, the Zimbabwe Human Rights Commission is also utilizing its social media platforms such as Facebook, Twitter, and the Commission website, which I believe you are very familiar with, to promote this campaign. The Electoral Rights Awareness Campaign spans the three phases of the electoral cycle, which include the pre-electoral period, the polling day, and the post-election period. The Commission's Electoral Rights Awareness Campaign is a constitutional foundation. It is critical to emphasize that Zimbabwe is a democratic state founded on values of respect for fundamental human rights, freedoms, and good governance. The principles of good governance provided for in Section 3, Subsection 2 of the Constitution of Zimbabwe, Amendment Number 20, Act 2013, include a multi-party democracy with an electoral system that is based on universal adult suffrage and regular free and fair elections. In terms of the Constitution, our own elections are supposed to be held every five years, and the country has not failed in this regard since independence in 1980. As you may also be aware, ladies and gentlemen, our country is already in pre-election mode. 
as we prepare to hold harmonized elections on the 23rd of August 2023, in which presidential, senatorial, parliamentary, and the lo local council seats will be contested for. Section 1 of the Constitution of Zimbabwe asserts that Zimbabwe is a unitary, democratic, and a sovereign republic. This constitutional provision reflects the fundamental principle of democracy, which is that the will of the people is the source of legitimacy of sovereign states. The provision promotes the principle of rule by the people directly or through freely elected representatives who are chosen through elections. Furthermore, Zimbabwe's party to international and regional instruments which guide the conduct of democratic elections. In this regard, ladies and gentlemen, Article 21, one of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, UDHR of 1948, states that everyone is the right to take part in the government of his or her country directly or through freely chosen representatives. Article 21.3 of the same states that the will of the people shall be the basis of the authority of government. This will shall be expressed in periodic and genuine elections which shall be by universal and equal <coughs> suffrage and shall be held by secret vote or by equivalent free voting procedures. Article 13.1 of the African Charter on Human and People's Rights, ACHPR, is a provision on the right to vote similar to Article 21.1 of the UDH RIF referred to and 25A of the International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights, ICCPR. The International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights the UN Secretary General Guidance Note on Democracy Assistance, the SADC Principles and Guidelines Governing Democratic Elections, and the African Union Charter on Democracy, Elections and Governance, all recognize the central place of the will of the people in electoral processes. Section 67 1A of the Constitution provides for political rights. It states that every Zimbabwean has the right to free, fair, and regular elections for any elective public office established in terms of the Constitution or in other applicable law. Section 67.3a of the Constitution states that subject to the Constitution, every Zimbabwean citizen who is of <coughs> or over 18 years of age is the right to vote in all elections and referendums to which the Constitution or any other law applies, and to do so in secret. Section 67.3b of the Constitution provides for the right to stand for election for public office and if elected to hold such office. The Electoral Act, Chapter 213, operationalizes Section 67 of the Constitution on the Conduct of Elections, as well as providing for the Code of Conduct for political parties and candidates. In this respect, ladies and gentlemen, the Zimbabwe Human Rights Commission has the constitutional obligation to monitor and ensure that all the fundamental rights and freedoms provided for in international and regional instruments as well as the constitutional provisions relating to electoral processes are respected, protected, promoted, and fulfilled. More critically, citizens should be empowered with knowledge of the various rights and freedoms enshrined in the Constitution and the redress mechanisms available in the event of a violation of such 
electoral rights and freedoms. The Commission would therefore like to take this opportunity to remind the various duty bearers and stakeholders involved in, elect in electoral processes who include political parties, contesting candidates, law enforcement agencies, independent commissions, media houses yourselves here, and the media practitioners and traditional leaders of their constitutional obligations and the responsibilities of protecting, promoting, and fulfilling fundamental human rights and the freedoms related to the entire electoral cycle to ensure peaceful, free, fair, and credible elections as provided for in international, regional, and domestic human rights standards, guidelines, and best practices I have earlier referred to. Finally, ladies and gentlemen, the Commission would like to assure the nation that it will continue to discharge its dual constitutional mandate by receiving and investigating complaints of human rights violations and the maladministration related to elections by monitoring the human rights situation throughout the entire electoral cycle and raising awareness of the rights, freedoms, and the entitlements of citizens before, during, and after elections through its continuous electoral rights awareness campaigns. With these few remarks, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to thank you all for coming and listening in. You are now free to raise any questions for clarification of the statement that I have made. I thank you. You are thank free you. to clap your hands. Thank you very much, Jay. Uh, yes, so this is the opportunity. If there are any questions uh, or comments to the commission, you are welcome to identify yourself, your organization or media house, and then you ask the question. Yes. My name is Philippa Chaja. I'm with the review and mail. My review engineering. My question is uh, are there any statistics uh, pertaining to uh, human rights abuses that you may have? You said we are addressing those, and I am interested in, in the statistics. How many have you encountered? Statistics of human rights abuses. Yes. So you are talking about the complaints that we have received yes. so far uh, during this first cycle of the electoral process. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Um, I'm sure we would have uh, numbers. And uh, um, my my officials here who are on the ground will provide us with the figures. Would you like to provide the figures, Mr. Mkutiri, if okay. you have them off the cuff? Yes, thank you very much. Uh, just for this year, we, from January to end of June, we have received the, uh, 438 cases uh, on human rights violations. And uh, within those 438, 61 have been related to alleged violations of political, uh, civil and political rights. So these are cases that are receiving attention, investigations, and so on. But this is a moving number because we are open for business every day and more cases are coming. We have in the process, even before the um, polling day, an opportunity as we are monitors. We are the only authority in terms of constitutional powers, which is uh, the power to uh, monitor. Monitor is differentiated from uh, observing, allows us to raise issues with the responsible authorities so that redress mechanisms can actually be um, 
embarked on before the election day. Say someone is complaining that, you know, they've not um, identified or been assisted in identifying, you know, uh, the ward from which they should be voting. We'll raise that immediately with Zek, and Zek will take measures to ensure um, their are, they are right to vote is not violated. Thank you very much for the question. Um, we'll take more questions. <coughs> yes, please go ahead. Thank you. Um, pertaining to peace, uh, we are all aware that uh, this is a period where peace is quite relevant. Uh, what initiatives have uh, been put in place to ensure that uh, it is a doubt during the season at Wadena? Yes, this awareness campaign actually is taking that into um, account. As you well know, there are many stakeholders um, responsible for ensuring peace. And uh, one of the major stakeholders is the head of state, where he is the commission that he has at every turn been emphasizing this point of peace. peace. And uh, we also have um, a sister commission, one of the uh, five chapter 12 independent commissions, which is dedicated to the issue of ensuring that there is peace prevailing in the country. At all time, not only during the uh, electoral cycle, <coughs> even long after elections, and that is the National Peace and Reconciliation Commission. But we are all there to ensure we support its uh, activities. And by the way, there are no human rights or freedoms that can be enjoyed when there is no peace. You can talk of development of any sort when the country is at war. People are at each other's throats. So it is vital that uh, we all emphasize the importance of peace. And it's through such mediums as yourselves here, uh, we would be happy if you would be talking about peace before, during, and after elections. Yes, when there is no peace, there is civil strife. Look at what is happening to countries in the north of us, to Sudan. <coughs> it's no longer a country, and I don't think anyone will be prepared to experience such a harrowing, you know, um, uh, issues where people go for each other's throats. Mm -hmm. After all, we are all related in one way or another <coughs> through our churches, through the villages from which we come. So what should divide us? So we emphasize the issue of peace, indeed, for people to enjoy their uh, constitutional rights and uh, uh, fundamental freedoms. Thank you very much, Jay. Yes, more questions? Thank you. My name is Tezacho. I'm a journalist in the Observer online. Yes, my question is, uh, you said there is an audio that leaked social media from a, a, a data state the head minister I can give a name here that was the insulting a police officer and we, up to now there's no any arrest uh, that any police report that any police action against him. Then my question is as human rights commission uh, do you have the power to represent people who are victims of political violence from the big fish? Who has got complaints against the big fish? Yes, yes, indeed. You know, our, our mandate is to protect and promote and enforce human rights. 
And uh, we normally do this um, at our initiative. We also, this is why we have these awareness campaigns. But we also receive complaints, investigate those complaints, and act upon them. And where we feel that um, a complaint is of a criminal nature or a violation is of a criminal nature, we are empowered to direct the Commissioner General of Police to carry out an investigation and bring the, the um, perpetrator or culprit to book. In other words, they will have to be taken to court and uh, answer for their uh, commissions. Um, and uh, in regard to the case you referred to, we have not received a complaint, but we have also um, been watching, you know, uh, media coverages of, uh, or reportages of this matter. We have a team which is actually doing its rounds um, in the area, in the Midlands, you know, in the Mashingo area, and uh, we have requested them to get the insights of exactly what happened before we can make uh, a statement. And even the reports we, 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 we make, uh, they are not just, you know, made from media reports. We also cover, you know, I mean, um, media, media um, reports, which you, you, you report <coughs> on, and we follow them up. But we need to have, you know, first-hand information or facts on the matter before we can uh, make public statements about it. So we'll definitely, uh, once our, our team gathers all the relevant and necessary information, be making um, a statement. Thank you very much. Yes. Question uh, please. Uh, my, my, my name is uh, Maui Jenanis for the Kana People's Visions. I wanted to know if this is the first time we are having such an electoral campaign awareness strategy to be launched for, for the elections. Or in the previous elections, we had some of these strategies being launched. Yeah, we, we have had you know, uh, similar uh, gatherings with, uh, with the press before every election. As you well know, um, we have covered first the 2013 uh, electoral process, uh, but unfortunately at that time there were only commissioners and uh, um, no members of uh, the secretariat. The first commissioners went for four years without support staff because there was no budget for that. Uh, we only got a budget for support staff in uh, 2014. So we covered the 2013 elections uh, with the support of um, development partners such as the UNDP, the IOM, um, the GIZ, uh, and others. Uh, but we also had a press conference uh, before those elections. Uh, we were then still in Belgravia before we moved over here. Um, we had a similar uh, gathering in 2018, eh? Yes, in 2018, uh, before the, the elections. And this one was held here in our main boardroom on the second floor. So we have been doing this, you know, religiously uh, ever since we were established. Okay, thank you. Yes, so we have had similar strategies and conferences before, and this is just consistent with what we have done before. Thank you. More questions, comments? Sister. Okay. <coughs> You're speaking about human rights. I feel that there are some people who don't know their rights, and some maybe they know their rights <coughs> and exercise those. But sometimes maybe a person doesn't know her rights. To such people, what do we do to those people? Because sometimes we, a person can be refused to do something 
because she's refused, she doesn't know her rights. My rights are this and this and this. I'm supposed to exercise this, 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 this. this. So there are more people like that without knowing their rights. What are you doing as a commission? Yes, th thank you very much, sister. That, that's a very important question and good question. Um, when, when we were established and uh, we uh, recruited our um, secretariat in 2014, the first thing we decided to do uh, was to hold a, a baseline survey um, to find out how many people were aware of their constitutional rights. As you well know, the 2013 People Driven Constitution is a robust Bill of Rights. Uh, it is civil, political rights, including the socio-economic cultural rights, which were not in the previous constitution, the Lancaster House Constitution. So we wanted to know whether people were aware of their rights enshrined in the Bill of Rights. And uh, um, yes, we were stunned, surprised. Uh, only about 14%, and uh, mostly in urban areas, were aware of uh, their rights. But as to how many people had read the new document, the Constitution, the figures were even much, much smaller. I think it was around 8 7%. So we thought we needed to have this, you know, uh, these um, uh, awareness campaigns regularly. We were constrained at that time to be in every corner because we didn't have, you know, um, sufficient manpower to um, send out to uh, the remote areas. Uh, we only had um, a complement of uh, about 50 officers, but human rights officers, they were only 18. We are talking of 15, including support staff, those who are in administration, finance, public relations, and so on. So we only got um, our, our, I would say, staff which is equitable with, with uh, the demands of the office um, last year. You know, but uh, even previous to that, we have been carrying out the awareness campaigns, and also advising that this is not a task for one institution. I think Section 4 of uh, the Constitution uh, advises on whose responsibility it is to make sure people are aware of their, uh, their human rights. And uh, um, we encourage our sister commissions to also pass on the message as they are discharging their mandates out there. Uh, but uh, we are doing it, sister, we are doing it, and uh, the teams we have you know, referred to are uh, already in the field. When they are talking about the issue of political rights, electoral rights, they are also talking about the other general rights, socioeconomic, the right to access to health the right to education for all. They will be talking about <coughs> all these. And uh, the message um, is what we are talking about even this morning, that people have their rights and they can claim them by making complaints with um, the Zimbabwe Women's Rights Commission. This is why we exist. We exist to ensure their rights are enforced, they are respected, they are protected, they are promoted in every respect. Thank you, Chief. Yes. Uh, can you comment, uh, Dr. Mbadi, about this new budgeted bill, bill of rights? There is this new bill of rights that says, if you say something bad about your country, you are liable for imprisonment. Can you comment about this? The Patriotic Bill. Yes. Well, yes, uh, um, my, my comment is um, what that uh, law is intended to do is to ensure that uh, people are aware of uh, their rights 
right to sovereignty, right to a country, and uh, you would normally disturb those rights if you begin to uh, sit with third parties, with the foreigners, and talk ill about uh, your, 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 your country. Um, I'm not too sure of uh, the penalties, but I think, you know, if, if you look at the laws of any country, um, the United States, for example, which, which claims to be the mother of, you know, human rights, uh, is such a bill. They have a patriotic, you know, um, act. And uh, if you talk ill about the country, you know, uh, the United States, you'll be severely punished. Or even if you disgrace the, the, the flag, you'll you know, face severe punishment. And so I, I think people have to become aware that um, you, 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 you cannot claim rights in any other country other than your own. And therefore you have to be patriotic to your country so that it continues to exist to protect you and you to make sure that you make a claim you know, this is why we have foreign missions. If any one of our um, citizens here faces a problem in a foreign country, they will run to their mission or to their, you know, embassy uh, for assistance. And uh, I, I think personally um, that, that, that law um, was even late in coming. We should have had it at independence in 1980. Thank you, Chair. Uh, this yes, question is not from uh, I stand to be corrected. You spoke of the commission having received uh, more than 400 cases of <coughs> violations, and you said 61 had been uh, are being attended to. What of the remaining number? What's happening to the remaining number? Oh, thank you very much, Chair. If I yeah, can yeah, clarify yeah, that. Please. Yes, I said since the beginning of the year until 30 June, the commission has received complaints on allegations of human rights violations and human administration in general. And all the 438 are receiving attention. Then within those 438, there are 61 that are related to elections. Those are of the civil and political rights needs. And they are also receiving attention. Some of them have even been concluded. The commission has made a decision either to confirm that a violation was done and the remedy should be uh, uh, seen to be done, and also some of them dismissing uh, the allegations. So they are at those different levels. Thanks for the question. Just me to clarify. Yes, uh, yes, you had a question. Yeah, so, Tell them to proceed when I ask them to postpone the meeting until tomorrow. tomorrow. So yeah. let them carry on. Okay. Yeah, okay. Can you introduce yourself in your organization? Precious, yes. Sorry? Precious, yes. As a commission, what is your mandate and your priority between punitive measures and avoiding human rights? Okay. The, the last part. Can you repeat the question? Would you rather uphold punitive measures or human rights? Punitive measures or human rights? We, we are a human rights institution. And, uh, you know, our mandate does not end there. If any punitive measures encroach on the enjoyment of human rights, we also come in and try to ensure that punitive measures are equitable um, if we, it is an offence with the offence. But uh, we, we don't monitor the issue of the punitive measures. That is a matter for the Judicial Services uh, Commission, as you well know, through the courts. Doesn't it become your matter the moment it infringes on one's human rights? Yeah, it does. That's why I said, you know, if punitive measures <laughs> encroach on the uh, enjoyment of human rights, will come in. I mean, we, we have on occasion, you know, um, uh, interfered or brought to the attention of uh, the judicial services uh, matters of people who have been held 
in remand for long, long periods without being, you know, brought to, to trial. Because that's interfering with the, um, the, the right to access to justice for someone. Justice must be dispensed as promptly as possible. Um, so, yes, we do have an interest in that. Thank you. Uh, do we still have questions? Have yes, please come. Yes, okay. Uh, a, human rights, a global human rights organization, Amnesty International, uh, they released a, a gaming uh, expose. It's a document about <coughs> the human rights abuses that is that is taking place over the past five years. They say that these elections are being held under such a human rights abuse. Uh, what is your comment pertaining to the allegations that they are making regarding this country is uh, is one that is now conducting elections amid such a rampant violation of rights. Well, we, we, we are not aware of uh, that documentary. And I wish Amnesty International were aware that uh, there is a human rights board in this country which is responsible for protecting, promoting, and enforcing human rights. And if the any facts of violations would have brought those to our attention for investigations. We do not uh, rely, as I said, in my you know, uh, statement earlier on uh, um, media publications is just like that. We investigate. So once we get you know, um, access to that documentary, we'll try to see what exactly they are talking about and uh, you know, uh, carry out our own investigations. But we have year in, year out, been making annual reports and we have been indicating those reports the nature of uh, human rights violations that we would have encountered in the course of, uh, of the year would have dealt with. And uh, those should uh, be more persuasive. I don't know whether Amnesty International is based here and uh, for purposes of monitoring uh, the issue of uh, enjoyment of human rights or they are doing it from, by remote control from far afield. I think it would be more credible than any other organization other than those which are based in this country. Oh, it's a press statement. Yes. No, we missed out on that. Uh, maybe if we can get it, if it's in one of our dailies here, we'll be able to, uh, you know, read it through it. Okay, okay. Yeah, we will try to follow it up and get the facts. Thank you, Chief. Uh, we have questions? Ben? So, thank you all very much for coming. Um, we have another meeting waiting for, for me <laughs> uh, of our Chapter 12. Uh, independent commissions, uh, which is being hosted by the OPC. So I have to rush out there. But thank you very much. You and I all have a duty. We are all stakeholders in this. Um, in fact, in the words of um, the Vice President, uh, Dr. Chiwenka, we are stockholders because we are also interested parties. You know, you may be safe today in terms of human rights violations, but you will not be safe forever. So we need all to make sure that we make a contribution and uh, enjoy our rights to vote or to elect our representatives in parliament, in the Senate, uh, and of course in the local government um, setups. So thank you very much all for coming. Hope to see you at the elections.